Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, day two of, hey, by the way, changing subjects. Larry, if those are paint swatches behind you, I vote for the light blue color. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are, and actually it's gonna be light gray. Blue is an accent color. Orange okay. is a workout room accent color. And that uh, works. <laughs> you are observant yes, uh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's what you do when you move <laughs> yes that's that's my add squirrel <laughs> uh, lo mismo huh <laughs> uh, yeah and your, co your coffee is making me jealous by the way i mean i'm drinking whatever this is and you yeah. got some really awesome coffee drink there all right, so yeah, day two yeah. and creating our blueprint for reading the millionaire real estate agent in order to build a career worth having, a business worth owning, so that we can live the amazing life we deserve to live, uh, have a, give experiences and leave legacies. Uh, day one, as I was preparing this morning, I realized I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these into different sections. And day one was mindset. And I'm just gonna review, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, your assignment starts with think powered by a big why, uh, read pages 72 to 77. So the whole idea behind what we're doing here is, is I'm reading this book for like the 30th time uh, I realize if I hand this book to someone and they read it front to back, they're going to get value. Yes? yes? Yes. However, if I give them an outline based on here's what you need to read first, here's what you need to read second, here's what you need to read third, in order to build a career worth having, then they're going to get even more value from the book. So it's kind of creating a career worth having 101. You guys are in college and this is your assignment. Mm -hmm. All right, so yesterday we started with Think Powered by a Big Why, read pages 72 to 77, think big goals and big models, pages 78 to 80, and think possibilities, pages 81 to 84. Part one is mindset. We start with mindset because 90% of success is mindset. It's the foundation. Part two, millionaire real estate agent principles. And four, five, and six. This is reading assignment four, five, and six. The first one is the six myth understandings between you and high achievement, page 47 through 63. Now, just like yesterday, I'm not going to go through the entire 47 to 63 with you. That's your assignment. However, I am going to touch on a couple highlights. Page 47. Fears are educated into us. Think about that for a moment. As a baby, as a child, you're not afraid of dogs. You think they're amazing. Dog, dog, dog. Until one barks at you or snips at your hand. And then all of a sudden you have a fear of dogs. Just one example. But fears are educated into us. Remember when you were a teen teenager, you were fearless. You were, there was nothing that could harm you. You did lots of stupid things. It's, you're lucky to still be alive. <laughs> if you're laughing, you know what I mean. <laughs> or is it just me? Am I the only one? No. Oh, okay, good. Good to know. Yeah, I, my friend and I, we talk all the time. We're like, you know, God definitely had a plan for us because we spent the first 25 years of our life trying to kill ourselves. And we're still here. <laughs> all right. The millionaire real estate agent models we reveal in this book embody basic principles that we believe are fundamental to real estate sales success. So principles. Here's the cool thing about principles. Principles exist whether you acknowledge them or not. Principles are like gravity. I could say mm, gravity is not a thing. I'm going to go out and jump off the garage and I'll just float. 
I'm hitting the ground. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I ignore gravity. If I deny gravity, it exists. Principles are like gravity. They represent the core activities that must be successfully and consistently done before massive sales achievement can be attained. Underline the word before, like a hundred times. Key word in that sentence. But before we tackle these concepts, I believe you need to examine some of your core beliefs about success. So you have core beliefs that you weren't born with, they've been nurtured into you over time about success, like money is evil. Hmm. How, real, how real or unreal they truly are and how they may impact your chances for success. At best, your beliefs can lead to great confidence and at worst, they can lead to extreme doubt. If allowed to exist, doubts can truly undermine your confidence, your actions, and ultimately your dreams. Page 47. Thank you, Shirley. It's great to see you here, by the way. All right. So the six myth understandings, pages 47 through 63. Um, draw a line. Just grab a piece of paper and draw a line. And on the left side, put the number one. On the right side, put the number 10. 10 represents massive success. One represents complete and total failure. And how do you see yourself? Where are you on this chart? And here's the thing that I know, I know a lot of people and I don't know anybody who is a 10. I also don't know anybody who is a one. Most, most of us land somewhere in here. Now, what are the obstacles that are standing between you and moving closer to becoming a 10? What are the myths that you need to remove from here in order to move closer to, to becoming a 10? Or what are, what are the thoughts that are like a magnet that are pulling you back to becoming a one? Do you know what a financial thermometer is? A financial thermometer is the amount of money that you're comfortable making, having. We all have one. You start building investments, you're saving money, you're making money. For the first time in your life, you break six figures and you're making over $100,000 a year. And then you get to a half a million or you get to a million and your, fi your, your financial thermometer is gonna act like a magnet that starts pulling you back. It's more money than I've ever had. I don't, I, can't see myself making a million dollars a year. I can't see myself living in the house of my dreams. I can't see myself giving away a million dollars a year to help other people. Just don't see it. It's a myth that's pulling you back. Mm -hmm. Here's the good news. You, you your brain, is like a computer. You can reprogram. You can become a new creation by renewing your mind. One more thing on that. Be careful what you let in here. Be careful who you let in here. Guard it. 
And the people you associate with, the books you read, what you watch on TV, it's why I won't watch the news. I haven't watched the news in 10 years. I go to my friend's house over on the West Coast. He's always got the news on. I'm like, okay, I'm going to leave here feeling like crap. I know I am three days watching the news and I'm going to have to go into therapy when I get home. <laughs> it's true. Very sad. John, what you just said is very, very true. Uh, you can reprogram your mind. It's very, very true. Yes, sir. Just wanted to say that. It is. That's great news, right? Because what if the opposite was true? <laughs> right? Uh, book number three has a title. It's not finished, but I am working on it. And the title is, Is Life a Lottery Ticket? Now, it's my first book that doesn't have anything to do with real estate. This is just life. And the whole idea behind the book is a question. Is life a lottery ticket? I mean, because nope. if it is, if this is the hand that I've been dealt, then I may cash it in. I, I'm done playing the game because I don't like my hand. Here's the answer. Life is a lottery ticket. You can't choose where you're born. You can't choose if you were born into a family that loves you and supports you or a family who physically and mentally abuses you. You can't choose whether or not you grow up in poverty or you grow up in abundance. You also can't choose if you have a car accident this afternoon that causes serious life-threatening injuries or if, you have, or if you get cancer. Can't. Now, what you can do, and life is not a lottery ticket, is you can choose how you respond. Exactly. And this book is just going to be a series of stories about individuals who have dealt with massive adversity, losing lottery ticket. Nick Vukovic, born with no legs and no arms, losing lottery ticket. Nick Vukovic, international bestseller, motivational speaker, evangelist, changing lives, winning lottery ticket. You decide. We good? All right. Reading assignment number two in your playbook is the four stages of the millionaire real estate agent model, pages 65 through 70. And homework. So proud of those of you who did your homework last night. A few of you talked to me this morning and shared that you did and just music to my ears. I love that. It's not too late to go catch up on yesterday's homework, by the way. So the four stages of the millionaire real estate agent model. This is the triangle. Think a million, earn a million, net a million, receive a million. There's a new stage that's been added since the book was written, and that's give away a million. And it begins with think a million. Now, here's what Gary says. He says how you think matters. How you think in the beginning really matters. Now, he shares a story, and the story that he shares is about starting Keller Williams in Austin, Texas in the, in, in the early 80s, the mid 80s. And he had two offices and, and he decided that in order to build a massive business, he needed to change the way he thought. And he started answering the phone, thank you for calling the international headquarters of Keller Williams Realty. He had two offices. They were both in Austin, Texas. Now, I'm sure that there were plenty of people who made fun of him, right? Who the heck does he think he is? Now, fast forward to 2021, there's over a thousand Keller Williams market centers in 52 countries with 182,000 real estate agents, the largest real estate company in the world. How you think in the beginning matters. Here's the other thing he says about that. He says, when you do that, it forces you to create big models 
in order to be able to build the business you want to build. He goes on to say on page 68, let's go. Uh, if, if becoming a millionaire real estate agent is like climbing Mount Everest, then let's consider the first stage, think a million as base camp. And then he goes on to say, the quality of the preparations you make here will largely determine how high you will be able to climb. How well you prepare can also save you from some unwanted and unintended consequences that could lead to setbacks. Now on page 69, he goes on to say, middle of the page, think a million is an attempt to help you capture not only the mindset and attitude of millionaire real estate agent, but also the focus. Through experience, top agents have learned to differentiate. Boy, that's a great word. Somebody say it for me. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> right? Between what is truly important and what can be delegated and what can simply be ignored. Hmm. John, can what you repeat you? that? You said without saying that word, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so you had said, you know, it's an attempt to get the mindset and attitude of an MREA, and yeah, I'll matter? I'll repeat it. I'm joking. I'm, gonna say, I'm just not going to say that word again. I'm not. I'm going to change it. Think a million is an attempt to help you capture not only the mindset and attitude of the millionaire real estate agent, but also the focus. Through experience, top agents have learned to tell the difference between <laughs> what is truly important and what can be delegated. <laughs> you know what? I can laugh at myself. That's a good thing, right? And what can simply be... Hey, it's a mindset, John. It's a mindset. <laughs> yeah, like, do, do I really care that I can't say that word? Uh, no. Check that box. One of the biggest challenges we have... And he says in parentheses, and I face this too, Gary Keller talking about himself, is overcoming the incredible urge to leapfrog work to learn before going straight to work to earn. So you have a work to learn phase before you work to earn. Work to learn to the max, Suzanne DeCobo. She was an agent, she is an agent, who's a part of our market center here in Coral Springs, who joined the market center in 2016. And for six months, she sat in this training room every single day, all day long, attending every class that we had until finally I tapped her on the shoulder one day and I said, hey, what are you doing? And she said, what do you mean? I've got more to learn. I'm like, yeah, and go sell a house. Now, five years later, she's tracking $60 million in closed volume this year. 60 million, huge. Now, do you think if work to learn was important to her in the beginning, is it still important to her? Say yes, yes, she's yes. a student, she's a student. That's why she's so successful, 100%. All right, reading assignment number three, and then we're going to close for the day in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Principles section of Mastering the MREA is the 80-20 rule. And I want you to read pages 97 and 98. And sharing just a little bit with you, Gary says, there's this amazing principle in life that when fully understood will probably change your life forever. It's called the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule. Now, he goes on to share who Pareto was and how he came up with this. And, and he was a scientist who was studying uh, crop formation in Italy. And what he discovered was 80% was 80 of the farm at, farmland in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. Hmm, interesting. But he goes on to say, 
He also noticed that 20% of the pea pods in his garden yielded 80% of the harvest. Interesting. Yeah. Now, let's translate that to business. 80% of our results come from 20% of our actions. In Richard Koch's book, the groundbreaking book, 80-20 principle, he describes this rule as the principle of greatest outcome for time and effort expended. Most people believe that time and effort alone deliver results. And while this may be true, the 80-20 rule teaches us that time and effort on the 20% that really matters will deliver 80% of the results we seek and read the entire section, it's your homework, and the 20% in real estate are lead generation. Meeting with buyers and sellers. Taking seller listings. Negotiating contracts. And practicing and role-playing your scripts. That's it. There's not anything else. And until that is done every day, everything else is a distraction. Everything. Remember yeah. what we talked about yesterday, the day before you go on vacation roll, working with focus and energy. You work with focus and energy to complete the 80%. It's not a goal, it's a standard. Michael, talk to me. I ultimately believe that's where the one thing came from, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the one thing is the 80-20 rule to the extreme, because what Gary asked was, good job, Michael. What he asked was, if there are five things that truly matter, what's the 20% of the 20%? In other words, what's, what's, what's 20% of five? One. So then the focus question is, what's the one thing that I can do such that by doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary? What do you think the answer is? Thank you. Lead generation. Dude, if I can master lead generation, maybe that's all I do. Could I have a team where I send agents out on listing appointments? Say yes. Could I have a team where I'm giving agents buyer leads that are ready, willing, and able to buy a home? Because we've nurtured them until they're ready, willing, and able to buy a home. Say yes. Could I have a team where I have an administrative team who handles all of the 80% activities necessary in order to run a successful real estate business? Say yes. And the only thing I do is lead generate every day. Yep, you could do that. Matter of fact, you could do it at a really high level. Now I would tell you, and I'm gonna cheat just a little bit here, that comes with an asterisk because lead generation using the language of real estate, mastering the conversations of real estate is truly the one thing that will get you closer to your goal. All right, give me some ahas. Talk to me. So you say the first thing you have to do is uh, practice the script on goals, then generate, and then try to take the appointments with the buyers or sellers. And then when you have the time, then practice the contract. Yeah, so thank you. What happens is, is when you, when, when you practice and role play your scripts, you're mastering the conversations of real estate so that you're not just lead generating, you're also converting leads to appointments. You're converting appointments to agreements. And when you're focused on lead generation, you're one thing until you've achieved the standard for the day, it's gonna lead to face-to-face -face appointments with buyers and sellers which will lead to listing appointments, which leads to taking seller listings. 
which leads to buyer leads, which leads back to appointments with buyers and sellers, which leads to writing offers and negotiating contracts. When you take listings, you get offers. You're negotiating contracts. Number two, three, and four happen because you did number one. Understand? All you got to do is focus on the first goal, standard. Two, three, and four will take care of themselves. You block time for number one daily, and then you leave white space in your calendar. In other words, space where there's nothing in your calendar because you're filling those spaces with appointments. This is how you build a real estate business, Madeline. When, when you and I met, one of the things you shared with me is, is before joining Keller Williams, is this okay? I'm not gonna mention the name of the company, we're cool. Before joining Keller Williams, you actually joined another company. And your biggest challenge was, John, nobody's telling me what to do. Nobody's telling me the process to be successful in real estate. Yes or yes? yes. Yeah. And is this a different experience? Yes. Okay. There it is. Pretty much everybody. <laughs> this is not normal. Well, I'm not normal, that's for sure. But this is not normal. What we do here every day doesn't happen other places. It doesn't necessarily even happen in every Keller Williams office. I'm going to get in trouble for that one. <laughs> we are on Facebook Live. Oops. All right, give me some ahas. We're going to jump. Uh, I agree, real quick, I, you know what? Oh, oh, I love that. So <laughs> no, go ahead. I heard Larry first, and then I heard Vicky. So uh, go, Larry. Okay, just 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 real quick. Uh, one of the things uh, that that I don't struggle with it, but is is taking advantage. Uh, of what's already happened before you, like like we're 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 talking about, or Rain and I are going to do this uh, Thanksgiving pie thing, you know, and we've only been. You went mute, Larry. Unmute yourself. Uh, <laughs> we're we're going to uh, Rain and I are going to do this Thanksgiving pie giveaway thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm kind of struggling. Okay. I, I'm struggling with command and designing something. And then I found something on Etsy, you know, for five bucks, it's already created and you can make it yourself. And I'm like, we don't need pride of authorship. We need to do the 20% the that somebody else has done rather than spending 80 minutes of my time recreating, you know, the wheel and, and take advantage of what's already been done ahead of you and capitalize on it and use it it's just like this book you know you don't need to come up with new models and this is all over the book people struggle with trying to recreate create uh you know new tasks new models new this new that when you already have it in front of you black and white you know just follow the plan follow what other people have done you know uh, uh copying somebody else is the best form of a compliment so you know, use leverage, use what's already done. That's R and D. That's all I, that's what I got out of it. R and D. R and D stands for rip off and duplicate. R and D. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. Vicky, talk to us. You know, the bottom line is that we have to plug in and take advantage of what Keller Williams has to offer with all of these educational tools from showing up here as often as you can. And, you know, just really it lifts your spirits. It lifts your confidence. It pushes you to go. It's like classes, like, you know, Michael showing us how, you know, just to make phone calls, just listening to him was just inspiring. You have to plug in whatever you can do and push yourself. And it's like you were saying today, it's mindset. You fill yourself, your brain with that positivity and, and those things. And you surround yourself with people like this, you're guaranteed success. Preach it, girl. <laughs> That That's was, true. That was solid. 
I love it. Are you what I believe, up what I see. I, I, I could run through a wall right now. <laughs> and I'm excited for bold. I'm so excited for bold. You know, so. when most people say that, it's just a phrase, right? When I yeah. say it, I really could. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Waxman calls that football John. He goes, when football John shows up, watch out. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't come easy. It really doesn't. I mean, you guys, most of you know my story and it's maybe you know all of it, maybe you know some of it, but for the first 20 years of my life, the programming was negative. It wasn't just negative, it was abusive. You're worthless. I wish you were never born. You're never going to amount to anything. Um, I, I, the second school that I got kicked out of, the principal said he will end up dead or in jail, right? And that probably surprises some of you. Others are like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and rewrite the program. I'm still working on that, by the way. All right, time to get to work. What is work? Work is, do it. <laughs> work is 20 conversations a day, not 19, 18 or 17 conversations. When I have 17 conversations because it's close enough, I have settled. The 18th conversation on could have been a million dollar listing that I did not get. I never knew because I didn't make the call. Do not settle. Lead generate to get one to two appointments a day. The purpose of the call is to make care calls, not sales calls. Always lead with gratitude. Remember to say, thank you for taking my calls. I appreciate you. Bring value to every single conversation. When making your contacts, focus on getting one face-to-face -face appointment with someone that wants to sell real estate, getting a referral, adding one person to my database or building a relationship. Finding someone today is thinking about selling their home, set non-negotiable standards. Live up to those standards. 20 conversations a day is a standard. One face-to-face -face appointment per day is a standard. Adding one person to my database is a standard. Find someone today who's thinking of buying, selling real estate, whether it's three months, six months, or one year from now. It does not matter because I will need listings and buyers a year from now. I am looking for opportunity, period. Yep. Not opportunity today, opportunity, period. <laughs> Because I have entered those 250 people into my pipeline, I follow up with them forever because I reject rejection. And I will follow up with at least 250 people in the next 12 months. No is not a word that lives in my vocabulary. No simply means not yet. Because I have followed up every single day, I have created emotional proximity. People do not change their minds. They make a new decision based on new information. When I follow up forever, I create emotional proximity. When they make a new decision, they have hired me. Yes. yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you rock, girl? Yeah, <laughs> you're a rock star. <laughs> wow. Absolutely made my freaking. Diane. Love it. Love it. I can share. Love it.